Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Brick Workshop. I've been doing a lot of work in the house recently and unfortunately some in the garden where we had our fences blown down during a recent storm. And uh, that's why my video production hasn't been as frequent as normal. But there's one job that I've just done which I think might interest you. Let me just turn these lights on. Now on this end wall, uh, when we moved into the house, there were wires coming out from the centre, which would have been for some sort of central light fitting. But we wanted a picture to go there. And so we decided we'd have a pair of lights, one either side of where the picture would be. But there was no wiring. So wiring had to be created, the lights had to be fitted, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to give you an insight in some of the work that went on to do this. Right, I'll just let you see the starting point. Uh, now, on this wall, there is a single outlet where there used to be some form of light uh, before we moved in. And there's just a dangling wire here. And we're going to put a picture there. But we also want to put up lights one either side of the picture. So one's going to go over here and the other one will be symmetrically the other side over there. So uh, what I've got to do is to get power to these lights. Now, my electrician doesn't want to be in this film, so I apologise that the actual power bit uh, won't be shown, uh, but I'll be doing the rest of the work, and I think it will still be of interest, at least I hope it will. So what I've got to do is to make a bit of a channel here so I can get at some of this original wiring which is coming down, and then a channel going off to the left, another channel off to the right, which will go to my lights. Now, I have turned the electricity off and I've tested this. There's no power in this. I've also turned the power off to the sockets. There's a socket down on my right-hand side, down, down here somewhere, uh, and I've checked the powers off to that. And I've checked with my little handy gadget to see if there are any other uh, risky places. And I've got uh, one concern over on this right-hand side. And so what I'm gonna do is when I do the chiseling out, I'm not gonna go too deep in the area where I've got a concern, uh, so I can just see if there really is an exposed wire. It could be a metal tie that goes between the outer wall and the inner wall, so I'm not sure. Tom, the electrician, has been very uh, helpful and he's let me have, so I can show you, this little cable clip. Uh, he gets them from, I think, Screwfix, he said. Now, I hope you can see this one close up. This one is for joining uh, three wires together, so it might be three earth wires, three neutrals or whatever. And they've got little levers here. And if you raise the lever up like so, you can then put a piece of wire in here and then clamp it down. And that's that piece of wire fixed in with really uh, no fuss whatsoever. All you've got to do is bear the end of it. And you can do that for all three wires. And they're made by a company called Wago. And he also gave me a couple of offcuts of this uh, little bit of trunking, which. Uh, or conduit, uh, which uh, he wants the wire to go in. So I'm making my channels of a sufficient size to take this and then allow for the bit of mortar and a bit of plaster to go on top of it. And the other thing he's been really helpful with is uh, this. Um, I've, I've actually borrowed it from him once before. It's a Festool stone cutter uh, and it's a DSC AG125 and it can cut with its diamond blade, which you can just see here up to a depth of about 27 millimetres. Now, I have seen this demonstrated uh, when I visited Festool in Germany. And this chap cut across uh, a concrete floor uh, and there was absolutely no dust. In it, but it's absolutely amazing. And of course, underneath here, you can't see it, it's ran the wrong way, is my CT26 Festool extractor. Uh, which I know is absolutely perfect for this job. Even though I've checked several times, I'm just checking again to make sure there's no electricity floating around in these wires and I'm okay. And so I'm gonna take all this off. Right, that's that bit done. Okay, so these wires are gonna go up here. What I'm gonna do is very carefully with the drill, just drill around here, uh, and so I can break away the plaster which is over there and hopefully not risk damaging any of the wires. Now, it may not have been obvious, but I was only going down probably by about uh, eight millimeters in each of these little holes. And as soon as I felt any resistance, I stopped. And I didn't have it in hammer action. I had it in just rotating mode. 
I think at this stage it's worth uh, mentioning the, the setup I've got here. Uh, obviously this is uh, just a, a fairly ordinary, although very tall, uh, step ladder and I've had this a while, it's really, really good, really stable, and it's quite light. Most of it's made of fiberglass, I think. And then behind it, I've got this really nifty gadget. I have a clue where I got it from, uh, but it was many years ago. It's one of these uh, things that you can put into a number of different shapes. You can make it into one long straight ladder, you can make it into a step ladder, and you can make it into a platform. And when it's in a platform like this, I've got a piece of plywood that goes across so I can walk on it. Now I had to do uh, this bit here, and also around the wires, the old fashioned way. And that was simply drilling a series of holes and then using a cold chisel. Now, when I was doing this bit, I knew that there was some wires underneath, so I took it very, very carefully. And you may notice that there's a place here where there's a whole bunch of wires. They're actually data wires and TV coaxes. And they go, I assume, from uh, the first floor uh, downwards to some sort of distribution box which used to be in a cupboard somewhere. So anyway, that's all been sorted out and now I can now cut the, the channels the easy way. Well, I had a prep to go just here and uh, that worked well. So I'm now going to cut the channel all the way this way. Okay. Well, that was pretty impressive, pretty quick. And now all I've got to do is just to knock the channel out and uh, that should be pretty easy. Well, that has worked out pretty well. I'm really pleased with that. So, uh, good little tool. This uh, it's a DSC AG125. That's it from Festool. And of course, I've got my little festival drill which I used a lot as well. So overall I'm really pleased with that and I'll show you the next stage after uh, Tom's been to do his bit of wiring. Well Tom's been and he's very kindly uh, done uh, the wiring for me and um, he actually uh, started to do the filling. I finished it off last night. Uh, that's the first lot. Uh, I used some of this blue circle mortar mix. Uh, basically it's a powder inside. You just uh, add a bit of water, uh, a little bit at a time, as much as you think you can use. And uh, I then used a palette knife to uh, squeeze it in. And uh, that's made, made a good job. And uh, the wiring's been checked, and it's all safe. Uh, the, the power is still off, though, as we go back the next stage. Now, my next job now is to use uh, some fine filler for this uh, final bit. And uh, you may see this. This is a little delta sander uh, made by Festool. This is the, I forgot what it is. Uh, this is the DTS 400. And it's really good at smoothing down uh, plaster. And I actually ran it over after I'd done that mortar mix, which went in. There were a couple of places where it crept a little bit uh, close to the surface. So I ran this over and that's now ready for the top coat. When the top coat goes off, I'll then use a finer piece of sandpaper in this just to make it all perfect. Now I'm going to be using this cheap and cheerful filler which I got from Screwfix. Um, there's 500 uh, milliliters it says in this tub and I think that should be enough for this job. And uh, I'm going to use either a tool like this or uh, this uh, scraper to try and get it as tidy and as flat as I can. I'm not desperately good at this and uh, I'm not worried if it ends up being proud of the plane of the surface because when I come to do the final sand before doing the emulsion uh, that should sort it out and make it flat. Now this is probably the first time I've ever done this in public as it were um, so you have to understand I'm not an expert at this and I hate doing it but I'm going to do my best. The, the trick is that I've found is that uh, when you've got some on the palette knife is to then go downwards into the um, place where it joins the existing flat surface. And if it's at the top, go upwards into it. And that way it squeezes stuff right into the joint. Now do remember to make sure you've turned the electricity off when doing this sort of work.
Well, I must say this is going far better than I expected. It's much easier than I anticipated and uh, I'm very pleased. Uh, this cheap and cheerful stuff from Screwfix appears to be perfectly good. Well, that uh, filler has gone off uh, nicely, so I've got some 120 grit on this uh, sander now. I'm just going to rub it down and I'm just going to make sure it's completely flat. Now, there may be the odd place where I've got to do a little bit of extra filling, um, but um, I think this is pretty nearly there. Just a couple of tiny places to fill, nothing of any real note. Well, I think that's it. All I've got to do now is let, let this go off, just check that whether it needs a little final little sand, and then I can paint it, and then that will be job done. Well, the lights work. Right, let's get this picture up. I better check that it's uh, level. Well, because the picture is quite heavy and there's a bit of friction against the wall, it's quite possible to put the picture up with it being off center, even though the hook is dead center. So I've just checked it, it's fine. Well, that's it, job done. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.